gum gum whip. Yeah. All great fighters call out their finishing moves. No, they don't. The One Piece live action made it very clear that they would only be reserving attack names for quote unquote finishing moves, but that doesn't mean those were the only moves that made their way into the series. Welcome to One Piece Explained, and in this video, we'll be going through all 40 or so of the attacks, techniques, and abilities that were adapted straight from the manga and anime. Some of these are overtly explicit, and others are a bit more subtle and quite fun. And if you're new to the channel, I do in-depth breakdowns of the manga and live action every week, so make sure to subscribe and like the video so you can get more videos like this one as soon as they come out. That said, let's get into it. Starting with episode 1, we have a couple techniques from Luffy and Zoro. Of course, the classic gum gum pistol was debuted as Luffy's finishing move against Alveda, just like in the anime's first episode, though we would see this in the manga for the first time used against the Lord of the Coast in chapter 1. From here, we move on to Sixus Island, where Zoro fights against Mr. Seven. Now, Zoro is one of the characters who doesn't believe in naming his techniques in this live action, and he also uses only two swords for most of his combat throughout the adaptation. As such, his iconic three sword style techniques don't really come through too often. That said, there are a few sequences in this fight that are somewhat reminiscent of techniques that we've seen Zoro use before. Toward the start of their fight, Zoro swings his two blades close to the ground, creating a small gust that blows out the candles in the area. This could be seen as an adaptation of his two sword style Hawk Wave technique that was first seen used against a mob of Baroque Works members on Whiskey Peak to knock them back. There's then this brief instance where he crosses his blades above his head, flexing his biceps in the process. While this may not have been entirely intentional, this pose is quite reminiscent of his one gorilla and two gorilla techniques that we first saw during the Enya's Lobby arc, though there his biceps are comically enlarged from his flexing. This one is probably the biggest stretch on this list, but I felt it to be interesting enough to include. Either way, Zoro's finishing move on Mr. Seven is a twin horizontal slash that doesn't cleanly line up with any of his other two sword style techniques from the source material, but the motion he makes can be seen as a nod to his onigiri technique, albeit without the third blade present, which was first used against Kabaji in the manga and anime during the Orange Town arc. Later on in the episode, we then get another name technique from Luffy, this time the Gum Gum Whip, which he uses as a finishing move against Axe Hand Morgan. This is a bit of a departure from the source material, where Zoro is the one to cut down Morgan, and the Gum Gum Whip was used to take out a group of Korean soldiers beforehand. Over in episode 2, we get the adaptation of Shanks' mysterious ability to scare off the Lord of the Coast, which would later be understood as Conqueror's Hockey. Aside from that, we have a whole slew of Chop Chop Fruit techniques in this episode as well, starting with an adaptation of Buggy's Chop Chop Quick Escape or Quick Dodge, depending on the translation. Buggy also seemingly uses a variation of this a bit later, removing a whole chunk of his torso when punched by Luffy. He then uses an adaptation of his Chop Chop Festival against Nami and Zoro, similarly to how this was used against Nami in the source material. And of course, Buggy's classic Chop Chop cannon is seen as well against Luffy, and in the manga, we saw this for the first time when he caught Zoro off guard and stabbed him from behind. Also, while it wasn't explicitly shown being used, we do get a hint of the buggy ball that's used by Buggy and his crew. This is implied through the wreckage of Orange Town that Nami sees when leaving the carnival tent, which is very reminiscent of what we saw in the manga. The final technique in this episode is Luffy's Gum Gum Bazooka, which, just like in the source material, was debuted as the finishing move against Buggy, sending him flying. Episode 3 is a little light on the action, as it mostly serves to set the stage for the next one, but there is a fun adaptation here involving Kurobi. When the Arlong Pirate pays a visit to Buggy, he dodges the clown's Chop Chop Cannon and delivers a guffaw palm bomb straight to the chin. This technique was first used against Sanji during the Arlong Park arc, but works very well here with a move being named after a big laugh, knocking out a clown. This is also the episode where we are introduced to Kuro's Pussyfoot Maneuver, also known as the Stealth Foot Technique, allowing him to move at rapid speeds. We saw this debut in the source material during the battle on the hill outside of Syrup Village. Now moving over to episode 4, we got our first instance of an Usopp technique with his lead star that he uses against Kuro, although it doesn't really land. We saw this for the first time in the manga and anime against some of the unnamed Black Cat Pirates during the aforementioned hill battle. Sham and Butchie's tandem tactics against Zoro could be seen as a loose adaptation of their Pussy Willow March technique that we saw in the manga, though instead of cat claws, they have their own bladed weapons in this adaptation. And much like in the source material, Sham snatches a weapon from Zoro during this fight, which Butchie refers to as Cat Burglary in the manga. Though here, Sham just takes Zoro's Wado Ichimonji and tosses it aside, whereas in the source material, Sham ends up stealing two swords, forcing Zoro to fight with only a single blade. Later on, Bushi tries to stomp on Zoro as a nod to the catapult catastrophe technique that we first saw used against him during their fight in Syrup Village. 
Over on the other side of the mansion, Kuro uses his high speed movement to claw and slash away at Luffy, which is a bit reminiscent of his out of the bag attack as seen in the manga and anime, albeit significantly watered down for this context. In the source material, Kuro was hurting friend and foe alike with this move, while here it's used to play a bit more into the horror inspired haunted mansion feel of this setting. Luffy is able to force Kuro out of hiding by delivering a stretched out hook punch that bears resemblance to the gum gum hook technique that he used against Foxy during the Long Ring Longland arc. We also see a similar use of Luffy's abilities during his fight with Arlong later on. And to finish their fight, Luffy debuts the gum gum bell to send Kuro flying, just as he did in the source material. On to episode 5, and we start off with some fun techniques here as Garp grabs a cannonball and launches it at the Straw Hats, recreating his Meteor Fist technique from the source material. Of course, this debuted much later on in the series when we first learned Garp was Luffy's grandfather after the Enya's Lobby arc. In response, we see Luffy deflect the cannonball with his gum gum balloon. This move was first seen in the manga and anime during the Orange Town arc when Luffy sent the buggy ball right back at the buggy pirates, but here in the live action, it looks to be an improvised technique that he tried for the first time. Also so of note, Luffy did use the gum gum balloon to defend against Garp's cannonballs in the source material here as well. Elsewhere in the world, we get the clash between Mihawk and the Creek Pirates, where we see Mihawk's gigantic air slash that cuts the Creek Pirate's ship in two, just like in the source material. Krieg brandishes his armor-based artillery as well, though these are much more toned down compared to what we saw in the manga when he attacked the Bratia chefs, with the firearms being limited to handheld guns and a small cannon that pops out of his shoulder. And of course, during Zoro's duel with Mihawk, we get an adaptation of the iconic 3000 Worlds technique, though its execution is not exactly the same as evidenced by the landing pose he's in when the swords break. In episode 6, we get the arrival of the Arlong pirates, and here we get a few of the fishmen's techniques. Kurobi sends Zeph flying backwards with an adaptation of the 100 Brick Fist. We first saw this used against Sanji during the Arlong Park arc in the source material, and we do see him get a taste of it as well in the live action just a bit later. During the fight between Arlong and Luffy, we see an adaptation of the technique Arlong used to weaponize a little bit of water as a projectile during the Arlong Park arc. There, it was just a few drops of water, whereas here we see him splash a handful of water from the ocean itself. In episode 7, we don't get too much action, but we do see the debut of Chu's abilities as he shoots out alcohol into a torch. This is the same technique that we see him use later on in the series, referred to as the Lippo Wurzer in the manga. This was first shown in the source material during his fight with Usopp. Now episode 8 is full of action as we get the climax of the arc with the Straw Hats and the Arlong Pirates, as well as the Marines toward the end. It all starts off with Usopp's Smoke Star technique that's used to distract the fishermen at Arlong Park before the Straw Hats arrive. In the source material, this technique was first used to help Usopp escape when he was captured by the Arlong Pirates. Here, he also uses this to hit Chu in the face, whereas in the manga and anime, he uses the Fire Star to get its attention away from the villagers. During their battle, Usopp fakes his death using his ketchup star, just as he does in the manga, and to finish off the fishman, he debuts his explosive star technique, setting the fishman's alcohol aflame. Now in the source material, the explosive star was first seen when Usopp used it to defeat Django during the Syrup Village arc, and when battling against Chu, he uses the fire star to help finish him off, after dousing him with alcohol and before beating him up with his hammer. Back in Arlong Park, we get the adaptation of Sanji's fight with Kurobi, and we see the string of kicks leading up to his Mouton shot to finish off the fishman. In the live action, this is a bit abbreviated as we only see a kick to the rib with Cotolette, a heel drop to the neck with Collier, a shoulder kick with Epaule, and a kick to the chest with Poitrine topping it off with the Mouton shot. In the source material, this combination is a little different as it starts with the neck kick collier, then followed up by the shoulder kick with Epaule, a kick to the ribs with Cotolette, a kick to the back with Cell, a chest kick with Poitrine, and a kick to the legs with Gigot, before finishing it off with the Mouton shot. Luffy debuts two techniques in live action during his fight with Arlong, as we see the Gum Gum Gatling for the first time. In the source material, we first saw this technique used against the Black Cat Pirates back in Syrup Village. And of course, the finishing move is the same as the manga and anime, with the Gum Gum Battle Axe taking down Arlong as well as Arlong Park. Though, this is not the first time we've seen this in the source material, as it was initially used to destroy the fins of the Bratier during the previous arc. When Arlong lunges toward Luffy during this final clash, you can see there's a nod to his shark dart technique where he would launch himself straight toward an enemy as seen earlier during their fight in the manga and anime, but in the source material, he's in fact using a different technique here with the shark tooth drill. And finally, we have the clash between Luffy and Garp, where Luffy uses the gum gum rocket for the first time, as he stretches himself back with his arms and effectively catapults himself towards his opponent to try and deliver a punch. This is a bit of a departure from how it's usually used in the source material, as it's simply a means of getting somewhere further away, as seen when it debuted back during Shellstown. 
Garp being able to effortlessly damage Luffy with his bare fists could be seen as a nod to the fist of love that he used to hurt Luffy when they first met in the source material. Oda had specified in SPS that the fist of love was not actually hockey, though it is possible that this live action scene was meant to be our first glimpse of armament hockey in this adaptation. And there you have it, all 40 or so of the moves that we saw adapted into the live action. I didn't want to include every single instance of Luffy punching or Zoro slashing that could be twisted into an adaptation of a name technique from the manga or anime, especially since there are a lot of times when they're fighting without stretching or using a third sword. That said, I am looking forward to seeing how they'll handle more named attacks going into Season 2 as we'll have way more crazy and wackier powers. Let me know in the comments what your favorite technique from this video was or if there was a particular move that you were sad they didn't adapt. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. You can find links on screen and in the description to all of my other Season 1 breakdowns as well as my videos on Season 2. Thank you so much for watching, stay safe, and I hope to see you in the next one.